Welcome to Autoimmune Healing Secrets Workshop. And I gotta begin with a disclaimer that this is the workshop Big Pharma does not want you to know about and the information that they do not want you to hear because this is all backed by science. It is from peer-reviewed literature, which if you're not sure what that means, it means that a lot of scientists and doctors have looked through it and said, yes, it is credible, but we are gonna be teaching you things today about autoimmune disease that you haven't heard before and how to reverse autoimmune disease. By the way, this has worked for thousands of people People worldwide and also I'm going to be offering you something at the end to discover if everything I teach you is applicable to your specific condition. So what you are going to learn is the single most important breakthrough in healing autoimmune disease that really not only gets to the root cause of the disease, but actually has lasting results. And this is giving thousands of people their health back, their life back. It's getting them off of medications, and it really, really works. So this is groundbreaking. It just came out in 2018. You're also going to learn the root cause of autoimmune disease. Once again, this is brand new information we've learned. And I'm also going to teach you about the triggers that flare up the immune system and cause it to attack healthy tissue. And these are known as flare-ups. This is when symptoms just kind of get worse. So I'm going to teach you how to prevent that from happening because it's imperative to healing. And then we're going to go through some more research on all of this content so that you have the best tools available to heal your body. And just a little bit about me, I am Dr. Dustin Vukovic. I work with NSI, and we are widely known in the world of regenerative medicine, uh, really because of the results we get with people and our ability to initiate true healing in their bodies. Uh, because of this, we've been recognized by Forbes, Entrepreneur Magazine, Huffington Post, a couple other things here. And I just want you to rest assured that we are recognized because of our results. So everything I'm telling you is backed by science, and we have proved in ourselves over the time. In fact, we've treated 20,000 people successfully and helped them regain their health, and we do not use medication or surgery to do this. Uh, and typically, our patients do come to us when they're at the end of the rope, so no matter how bad your health conditions are, rest assured, we have helped many people who are extremely sick, um, and because of that, we're redefining what's possible. So I just want you to know, um, stay tuned. I'm going to be teaching you a lot of information in this workshop specific to autoimmune disease. So let's go ahead and get started here. I want to begin by giving you a little bit of background about autoimmune disease um, and why it is such a big problem. Well, there's over 80 autoimmune diseases according to the NIH and over 490,000 peer-reviewed published studies on it alone on PubMed.gov. So this is a big research database. So we really looked through this when we were developing this information to make sure it's all scientifically sound, it makes sense, and it actually works. Here's a quick graph uh, just showing the amount of research that has been produced since the year 2000. It's literally doubled, and this means that scientists have been working so hard to find the solutions I'm going to teach you today. So before we jump into the research, I just want to define autoimmune disease. According to the NIH, they say autoimmune disease results from dysfunction of the immune system. So the immune system protects you from disease and infection, but sometimes the immune system can produce autoantibodies that attack healthy cells. This leads to autoimmune disease. And it's from this definition that the standard of care, which by the way, that is the conventional treatment utilized for autoimmune disease, uh, is really taken from. So it is designed to suppress symptoms and manage the disease. In fact, I'm going to show you research right from a government website that shows you their approach to healing autoimmune disease. But really, the only problem with this approach, as you just saw, I mean, the purpose is to manage the disease. Uh, it does not heal the disease. So managing symptoms, masking symptoms, making people feel better doesn't necessarily mean that their disease is healed and they are better. To really understand this the best way, I like to explain things like this. So say there is a leak in a boat, okay? And the leak is getting worse, water is getting in the boat, so what do you have to do? Well, you can do two things. You can get rid of the water or repair the leak. Sometimes you have to do both. So in this example, using medications to treat autoimmune disease is like getting rid of the water. So that's getting rid of the symptoms of the leak, right? But 
you, the leak will never be repaired by removing the water. You have to actually repair the leak to get true health. So that's the approach we take, and that's what I'm going to be teaching you. It's also really important to understand that suppressing the immune system, a.k.a. masking symptoms and managing the disease, is very dangerous when you're using immunosuppressants uh, because it increases your risk of cancer, increases risk of terrible infections like MRSA that don't respond to antibiotics. Uh, it increases your overall toxicity levels. That's where brain fog and fatigue come from. It weakens your immune system, and that leaves you more prone to getting things like the flu. So with these dangers of the medications, why are they still used and why is it like this? Well, unfortunately, it is because the system of healthcare that most people utilize, which is your conventional care, well, insurance only pays for things that they decide are medically necessary. And the pharmaceutical companies are the ones who pay for the research that show that the drugs are necessary. But I'm just here to tell you the truth and what they actually do. I'm going to share that with you here in a little bit. But this is the dictated primarily by profits, not true healing. That's the difference. And I'll tell you, this info is hidden from you that I'm going to teach you today because the big pharma does not want you to know this because, like I just said, it will decrease their profits. True healing should leave you drug-free, not drug-dependent. The solution is really simple. It's not masking symptoms with medications. It's finding the root cause of autoimmune disease, repairing the damage it's done, and then you can be truly healthy. It's easy, which is exactly why we formed NSI, to really restore hope by using scientific data and saying, hey, you know, it, it, medicine has advanced since the beginning. We should be getting away from drugs. And like I said, tr I mean, true healing should leave you drug free, not drug dependent. So we help a lot of people who are over it, who've been through the medical ringer and are just saying, hey, I want something different. That's precisely why we founded NSI. So if you are just absolutely sick of dealing with your condition, you're depressed about it, um, and confused about why the treatments haven't worked, and, and you've been told there's no hope, I just want you to, to know, I hear you, I understand you, and those are the exact type of people that we help on a day-to-day -day basis. Real quick here, I want to share uh, Zeta's testimonial with you. She came to us, she had debilitating lupus actually for about 10 years. She was in so much pain, she couldn't walk without help. Uh, she needed assistance. She couldn't even clean her house or do her dishes, and she was depressed because of this. And here's a quote from Zeta in an interview we did with her after uh, she had a phenomenal results by doing the exact things I'm going to teach you today. She said, the next day, the next day after, I was able to tell the difference that easily, that quickly, and ever since, it's been getting better and better. I donated my mobility chair. I do not use my walker, and I do not use a cane. I've been doing things I haven't done in 20 years. I never thought that I would be able to get my life back, and that's what I did. So I got to tell you, Zeta followed this program step by step, it was very consistent, and she had the results. Uh, in fact, she was so excited about her results. This is actually a text message that she sent one of our providers on his personal cell phone. That's how close we get to our patients. They are truly like family to us because you know what? Healing autoimmune disease is a journey. It takes commitment. It's not done overnight, but it can be done. And in fact, you see here, she went from chronic excruciating pain to barely anything, nine medications to one, and no more flare-ups. So how did she have these results? Well, it's really simple that she just used a different set of tools. So previously she used the tools like the medications and everything to suppress her symptoms. But when she used tools to develop true healing, that's the results that she got. And I just wanted to actually show you Dr. De Pasquale here, uh, the same doctor that Zeta worked with. But this is him with another patient uh, who went through this protocol and really reset her immune system and uh, you can see from April 2017 to July, she lost 37 pounds. So side effects of going through this program, you lose weight, you feel better, you have more energy, you're less fatigued, uh, you have more joy, less depression, and overall, you just want to live life again and people actually enjoy it. So what is the root cause of autoimmune disease? This is the key fact that you have to know 
uh, from here on out because I'm going to refer to it a lot and it really dictates our entire program and the way that we are able to get results. So in 2018, uh, a group of scientists got together and they discovered that it was determined the root cause of autoimmune disease is actually dysregulation of the immune system. So what this means, I'm going to explain this on the next few slides, but this was published in Frontiers in Immunology. Uh, it's a fantastic journal for treating autoimmune disease and a lot of research about that. But this is so important because remember the NIH definition says basically, hey, autoimmune disease is when uh, your immune system attacks yourself. Well, that kind of leaves a lot of open questions as to why. This tells us why, because the immune system is dysregulated. So what is dysregulation of the immune system and how does the immune system work? Well, there's a couple different types of cells in the immune system, but the first are lymphocytes. And lymphocytes can either turn into B cells, which are the types of cells that produce antibodies uh, whenever you get a virus or bacterial infection, and also there are T cells, which are the types of cells that actually attack your body's own tissue. So in a healthy person's immune system, this would attack things like cancer. And of the two types of T cells, the first type that they can turn into are called T effector cells. Now these increase inflammation. So for this reason, I actually labeled them as bad, just for simplicity. Note, they do have a good function, but in someone with autoimmune disease, they actually cause autoimmune disease to get worse. And the second type of T cells that they can turn into are T regulatory cells. Now these are the cells that decrease inflammation, decrease symptoms, create healing in someone with autoimmune disease. So for this reason, I labeled them as the good cells. Uh, the next type of cell we have to go over here is called TNF. This stands for tumor necrosis factor. That means this is the type of uh, cell that actually attacks cancer cells in your body. But not only does TNF attack cancer cells, uh, this is actually the key point here you've got to understand about TNF. It's the master mediator of the pathogenesis of chronic inflammatory conditions and autoimmune conditions, which are usually one and the same, meaning that this cell, depending on what it does, determines whether your condition gets worse or gets better. So how does it make your condition get worse or better? Well, it depends on which type of receptor it attaches to. So if TNF attaches to TNFR1, then that is going to have a bad effect or an inflammatory effect on your immune system. However, if TNF attaches to TNFR2, this is actually going to have an anti-inflammatory effect, and it's going to cause your immune system to start healing you instead of attacking you. But before continuing, this is really important to understand that most pharmaceutical approaches to treating autoimmune disease actually just block TNF. So that is the gold standard or the most widely used choice when treating autoimmune disease is um, they just say, hey, look, TNF can have a good effect, but it also can have a bad effect. So let's just block it completely. But the danger in this approach by blocking TNF um, is that it just does not allow TNF to adhere to TNFR2. And you can see here this yellow arrow says that TNFR2 is an expression marker relevant to T regulatory cell function, aka the more TNF attaches to TNFR2, the more T regulatory cells or healing cells your body will produce. So that's what we have to get your body to do is to produce the right types of T cells so they heal you and not attack you. Real quick, here's just a list of commonly prescribed drugs. We have TNF blockers, the ones I just talked about. This would be Humira, Remicade, Embryl, Simsia, Symponi. These are used for RA, lupus, Crohn's ulcerative colitis, psoriasis. Uh, we have beta interferons like Avonex, beta suron, Extavia, Plegridi, Rebif. These just uh, really block out different antibodies in your immune system. Uh, and there's also corticosteroids like prednisone, Rios, Deltasone that are used to treat flare-ups as well as DMARDs. Uh, these are used in the treatment of lupus and a couple of different things um, uh, such as RA, like cyclosporine, Plaquenil, Arolin. Uh, there's antibody therapies. This is used a lot in MS treatment, like Rituxin, Stellara, Kineret, Kisvara. And there's also uh, chemotherapy that is used in treating autoimmune disease. By just basically the approach, hey, let's just try to kill everything in hopes that we tone down the immune system. This has really harmful side effects. Um, this is like your Rumatrex, Trexol, Cytoxin. In fact, let's go ahead and look at a few of the side effects just so you understand how dangerous these medications are. 
here on these next slides. Here's the, the first one I want to go over is Humira. This actually has the effect of harming the nervous system by damaging nerves and creating numbness and tingling in the hands and other really horrific nervous system effects. Here's one from Remicade that's used in ulcerative colitis treatment is that it actually causes a rare form of fatal lymphoma. That's a deadly cancer. And here's a shocking one from Kineret that's used to treat RA and a few other things. That a side effect is rheumatoid, in fact, a common side effect is rheumatoid arthritis may get worse. I thought it was supposed to help you get better. This says it may actually make it worse. Next here, we have rituxan, which says when used in combination with chemotherapy drugs like methotrexate can actually cause stomach problems and even tears in the intestines. That is awful because that's going to accelerate leaky gut, which you're going to find out here in a second is one of the root causes of autoimmune disease. So it's going to flare up your immune system way worse and create a whole other cascade of health problems that you didn't have before. Next, Rios here, which is a corticosteroid, can actually have long-term side effects such as a decreased bone mineral density or even avascular necrosis, which is your body eating away at your bone from the use of steroids. And I'll tell you, I've seen this in a few of our patients, and it is awful, and sometimes people have to have surgery because of it. So there's other ways to prevent flare-ups other than corticosteroids by just removing the trigger of the flare-up in the first place instead of letting it happen and then treating it. And the last one I wanted to show you here, by the way, I took all these, as you can see, right from the drug uh, manufacturer's website, is Avonex. It's used in MS treatment. It says right here, Avonex will not cure your MS, and the way Avonex works in MS is not known. That makes no sense as to why it would be used in. So what do we do to heal autoimmune disease other than take these drugs that have really, really harmful side effects? Well, we have to re-regulate the immune system. There's a couple other things we have to do here. So let's jump into that research so we can get on the path to healing. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to teach you things right now that you can employ right away to put your body in the best state of healing possible. So the four steps to actually healing autoimmune disease that do not involve these very harmful medications and the steps that actually create long-term results is number one, discover the cause of your immune dysregulation. That's what we're going to go over right now. Uh, Re-regulate the immune system. That's the groundbreaking medical breakthrough. It's a very simple step. Remove triggers for autoimmune flare-ups. This is so your immune system doesn't get worse and attack you worse. And the repair the damage that has been done. So here's a chart just explaining how we approach autoimmune disease. And you can see here at the bottom are actually symptoms. So these are things like dry eyes, heart inflammation, lung problems, joint pain. Then next uh, up here, you see the different conditions. And at the top of the hierarchy, you see the root causes of immune dysregulation, aka autoimmune disease. According to that 2018 study, remember, the root cause of all autoimmune disease is immune dysregulation. So the reason we get results is because we deal with the root cause first. So let's go through each of these individually, and then I'm going to talk about them so you know which one or multiple um, conditions of these that you have so you can remove them in your life and get on the road to healing. The first one is genetics, and this is a really interesting root cause of autoimmune disease because as you're about to see here, it can actually be re-regulated and the genes can be turned on or they can be turned off. Genetics can influence a person's ability to not only really develop autoimmune disease if they have the wrong genes, but also express full health. So this is a dual-edged sword. So what does this mean? Well, we have to be able to get the genes to turn off. Uh, this is called the study of epigenetics. You can actually turn the right genes on and turn the wrong genes off, depending on the steps you take. So we have to turn the disease-causing genes off and the immune boosting and healing genes on. So what are symptoms that you might have a genetic root cause? The first one is autoimmune disease runs in the family. Next is you have symptoms of autoimmune disease, but no other health issues. So this is a person, and maybe you're watching this because you're not sure if you have autoimmune disease. Um, so if you have some symptoms of it, they can really start early, and they're called subclinical. That means before it's diagnosed. So it's important to really address this to turn those genes off before they are completely activated. And the last one is here is you have other genetic conditions. So this is really important to be able to re-regulate or 
turn the right genes on and turn the right genes off. And I'm going to teach you how to do that in order to get to the root cause of your problem and get on the road to healing. The next root cause here is inflammation. And mind you, this is chronic inflammation, not just a quick inflammatory response to something like an injury. This is inflammation that happens too long. So when this occurs over time, uh, this actually damages the immune system. So things that cause inflammation are stress, uh, negative thoughts, toxic foods, or just being in an environment of toxins. And a couple of these can combine, as you're going to see here, but inflammation was designed to be short-term. When it happens over time, it can lead to autoimmune disease. And symptoms that this could be a root cause of your condition are achy, painful, or swollen joints, uh, such as like an RA or even different conditions like lupus, a brain fog that looms around. This happens a lot in Lyme disease, MS, a lupus as well, a constantly tired and fatigued. Uh, this happens in a lot of conditions or just a general feeling of being unwell. The next one here is stress. Now, this is huge, particularly I know in America as a go, go, go culture, but chronic stress is not good and it can absolutely lead to autoimmune conditions and, and even make your immune conditions that you already have a lot worse. And stress was really designed to be a protective mechanism for when we used to live out in the wild. So if we were, uh, you know, walking around in the wild and a dog came out to attack us, you're gonna get stressed out. Well, that's normal. The stress hormones surge, they increase. This allows our body to get ready to either fight the threat or escape. Well, this happens chronically um, when we get stressed out about things at work or at home or other things in life. Our bodies don't really know the difference between running from a wild dog and getting stressed about small things. So when our stress is redlining, like you can see in this arrow here, just like a car's engine that will blow up if you keep it redlining, our bodies eventually break down. A couple symptoms of having too much stress are being easily agitated and irritable, uh, maybe blowing up over small matters that really shouldn't matter, um, relentless thoughts in your mind like mind racing all the time can never shut it off, or sleeping difficulties and never feeling rested. These are all signs and symptoms that you have too much stress in your life and you have to remove the stressors so that you can heal. Moving on here to the fourth root cause is the gut. And the reason the gut is such a big deal, uh, in fact, Hippocrates said over 2,000 years ago, who's the founder of modern medicine, look to the gut for the cause of disease. So what happens when you have something called a leaky gut? This is when these little cells here of the gut, as you can see to the left, actually become spread out. And then this allows things like viruses or toxins or even food you eat, like gluten or just even healthy foods to get in your bloodstream. And the body says, hey, that's not supposed to be there. It activates your immune system and makes your immune condition a lot worse. So a couple of symptoms that you could have gut issues, and mostly everyone does, uh, even people say, all the time to me, hey, you know, my digestion's pretty good, I'm pretty regular. Well, it doesn't necessarily mean that your gut is healthy. If you ever get bloated after meals, heartburn, indigestion, uh, maybe you have constipation and diarrhea from time to time, abdominal pain or swelling, or you have things like hemorrhoids, or you just have food allergies or sensitivities, you most likely have gut problems. And it's because of this, we actually include a gut repairing protocol in every single one of our autoimmune patients treatment because it's absolutely imperative to get to this kind of cause, as Hippocrates said, to remove disease. And last, uh, but certainly not least here, we have environment. And the reason I say not least is because this is actually the root cause uh, that is missed the most. Environment problems can lead to autoimmune disease. They can actually make autoimmune disease worse. So it is because of this, I actually recommend, uh, I'm gonna start off by talking about mold here. And mold is so bad for people with autoimmune disease, uh, especially Lyme disease, but it can flare up symptoms. It's a neurotoxin. So if you have autoimmune disease, you absolutely need to have your house tested for toxic mold. And one way to know that, hey, maybe mold is a problem is, is if you've ever gone on vacation recently, kind of think back in the past months or maybe stayed at somewhere else for the weekend or a week and you felt your symptoms get better, there's a really good chance that you you have mold in your house. So another thing could be constant exposure to viral or bacterial 
uh, infections or pathogens. Maybe the air ducts at the place you work or even your house are not clean. So again, this is another thing I'd have checked. Uh, even things like living by heavy duty power lines, those emit electromagnetic frequencies that are pretty toxic to the body and can flare up autoimmune disease. So it's really important to address your environment and give yourself the best healing capabilities by giving yourself a healthy environment that is sound and that does not contain all these things. But I'll tell you what, especially mold, I'm saying it again because I need to drive this point home. Every single person who has autoimmune disease needs to have their house tested for mold and have it removed safely if it is there. So symptoms that you have environmental root causes of your immune dysregulation is you're always sick or tired. And particularly both in combination, you know, just tired could be stress or you could have both root causes. But if you are sick or tired, um, just kind of alternating or together, there's a very good chance you have environmental problems and you should even have your house tested for mold. In fact, I uh, actually suggest every single person who has autoimmune disease have your house tested for mold and if you have it, you got to get it out of there or it's impossible for you to heal correctly. Uh, next is you have sinus issues and or allergies uh, and last, you have breathing difficulties without pathology. So this means you have shortness of breath or asthma or asthma-like symptoms, but you do not have like COPD or something of this nature. So now let's talk about flare-ups. Flare-ups are times in autoimmune disease where symptoms get a lot worse. So what causes flare-ups? Well, there's actually three triggers for flare-ups. They can be physical, chemical, or emotional. So let's go through each of these so you know exactly what causes them and how to prevent them. Because in order to heal your immune system, you have to prevent it from attacking your body the most. Remember that research I went to, remember the T effector cells that cause your immune system to attack your body. These things will directly cause those cells to be increased in production and your immune system will attack you. The first type of trigger here are physical triggers. These are events that happen to you, and these could be vi viral or bacterial infections, uh, traumatic events like injuries. It could be even adrenal fatigue, which is a chronic state of stress that leads to your adrenals being burned out and really causes a lot of health issues. If you're someone who's always tired, you probably have this, and you need to use things like adaptogenic herbs to reverse it. Uh, it could be a Lyme disease or another chronic infection or even leaky gut. So the top five things you can do to prevent these physical triggers from occurring and to really boost your immune system here are exercising lightly. Uh, heavy exercise can really actually flare up autoimmune disease like CrossFit and intensive lifting. So we'll want to do things like walking, biking, yoga, uh, drinking green juice or smoothies every day. Tons of antioxidants, super anti-inflammatory effect, puts you in the best healing state possible when you have the right nutrient balance. Um, things like meditating and finding peace, you know, finding relaxation in your life, knowing, hey, I have this condition, but if I follow the steps I'm teaching you, I will heal. And then also getting sunlight. This boosts your vitamin D production, which increases your immune system's ability to heal your own body. Another important thing here to reduce the physical triggers uh, are eating things like organic greens, organic berries, which actually help your body decrease inflammation and have a lot of healing components to them. Your immune system needs these to heal, specifically antioxidants found in these foods. And it's important to eat organic because non-organic things will increase toxicity and increase the attacks on your body. So, you know what, I, I hear you, uh, organic can be expensive, but it's absolutely imperative to eat organic when you're trying to heal. Uh, and really for everyone, but also wild caught fish like wild caught salmon, high in omega 3s, gonna help you reduce inflammation. And free range chicken and grass fed beef also contain very, very healthy proteins your body needs to repair itself. The next type of trigger are emotional triggers. Uh, these are different emotions that occur or you know things that make you feel certain ways or stressed out. This actually increases stress hormones, as I'm about to show you next here, and decreases your body's ability to heal. So a 2015 publication for Health and Human Services actually determined that the chronic stress response, uh, which you can see here on the left, is dictated by the brain. It talks to the pituitary gland, which talks to the adrenal glands. 
those sit on your kidneys in your back and what this does is the adrenal glands release cortisol when you get stressed so the issue with this especially when it comes to autoimmune disease is that it increases symptoms in people with leaky gut remember a root cause of autoimmune disease it leads to further dysregulation of the immune system the root cause of any autoimmune condition, dysregulation of the immune system makes that worse and increases risk of developing other autoimmune diseases. So you can see it's really important to address the stress in your life and have a sound and peaceful mind. And to achieve the right mindset here, you have to address these top five things. So these are the top five emotional triggers. Uh, number one, really being toxic relationships. So if you are in a toxic relationship, you have to either get out of it or you have to create boundaries for yourself. And a lot of people kind of undermine um, these things and say, well, I'm sure it affects your health. No, I'm telling you, research just showed that this really, really prevents people with autoimmune disease from being able to heal properly. Uh, the next thing here would be negative self-talk or beliefs. So if you're always getting you know, down on yourself or hard on yourself, you really have to stop doing that because it's going to prevent you from healing. And then if you have grief, shame, or despair, which is common in long-term autoimmune disease, uh, I just want you to know, get rid of that right now because I'm going to give you the hope here in a few minutes, the number one key step in healing your autoimmune disease so you can be happy now. But first, uh, I want to finish up here with chemical triggers. And these are things that cause flare-ups like deviations in blood chemistry, uh, gut problems and imbalances in the beneficial bacteria or the flora in the gut, or even inadequate hydration. So the things that cause these flare-ups uh, as far as chemical triggers can be a lack of vitamin B12 or D3 uh, or probiotics, digestive enzymes, or trace minerals in the body. So these are all things, if they are missing in proper amounts, it will cause flare-ups. And here are a list of things that can cause flare-ups. Uh, certain foods that you eat that have certain chemicals in them that are just really bad for people with autoimmune disease. So gluten, dairy, even grass-fed dairy, uh, corn, soy, sugar. So I know people say, well, what if it's GMO-free corn? It does not matter. You should not eat these five things if you have autoimmune disease because it will cause your body to attack itself worse. So just to recap here, these are the things that you need to avoid if you have autoimmune disease because they trigger the immune system. So go ahead and take a picture of this with your phone or a snapshot, but all of these 15 things absolutely you need to get rid of uh, because they will just really prevent your ability to heal. And it's obvious to know the things, especially if you've heard of like gluten and stuff like this, but I mean, things like toxic relationships can impact you just as much. And to continue on here with things you need to add, go ahead and take a picture of this as well. Um, by the way, uh, I just forgot to mention that another benefit of exercise or stretching is you're less likely to get injured because your body's more flexible and movable. So that's another benefit. Um, by the way, my favorite brand of digestive enzymes is called Enzymetica. And for trace minerals, I like to use trace mineral drops to add into my water. And these are important because minerals are needed for your immune system to work properly, just like vitamin D3 and B12. Um, so go ahead and take a picture of this. And then let's talk about how to heal autoimmune disease with the biggest breakthrough in medical science here. This is the thing you have been waiting for, and this is the thing that is literally changing the game and treating autoimmune disease, and I'm super excited to share it with you. So really pay attention to these next few slides. We're going to go through some more science, and you're going to know exactly what to do and how to help yourself the best. So there are two popular natural treatments uh, when it comes to autoimmune disease, and this is functional medicine and regenerative medicine. So let's talk about each of these and where they belong, how they fit together, and how if you combine them properly, you can actually get long-term healing. The goal of functional medicine, we're going to start here first, is to restore function with the whole body and mind. So this is a head-to-toe, inside-out approach that basically is a system of medicine that says if we can get everything to work together in unison, then the body's going to be healthier. So this really has two primary steps, but before that, I want to share something with you from one of my favorite holistic functional medicine doctors. 
And this comes from Dr. Mark Hyman, who's a medical doctor uh, who specializes in functional medicine, very, very prominently known. And he says functional medicine is the future of conventional medicine available now. It seeks to identify and address the root cause of disease. Remember, that's what we're all about here is finding the root cause and views the body as one instead of independent organs. So, you know, when someone says, well, I have RA or I have MS and it's affecting my brain or it's a, remember, autoimmune disease affects the entire body because it's dysregulation of the immune system. So it's important to use things like functional medicine to address that. And the first and primary step in functional medicine is balancing your blood work labs and other labs such as uh, the bacteria in your gut or probiotics in your gut. So there's a bunch of different tests that are done, but a practitioner will look at your lifestyle history. They'll ask you some questions and really dig deep. They'll spend time with you and then they'll order some tests and they'll balance everything out. So remember the vitamin D3 levels, the B12 levels. They'll make sure that all of these are balanced so your body's working properly. And then they'll also recommend a group of supplements to help you with this as well. The next thing that is important and the final step in functional medicine typically is healing leaky gut. So this will be done through diets, programs, uh, other supplements like L-glutamine, maybe even bone broth protein. Again, from Dr. Josh Axe, who I mentioned earlier, he has a great line of supplements and we use a lot of those uh, in our protocols. But you see here, remember the gut earlier was kind of leaky, things were getting in? Well, it's important to heal these cells so that the things don't get into your bloodstream and overdrive the immune system. But I've got to say that functional medicine alone is an incomplete approach when you're trying to really reverse autoimmune disease because remember when I said the second step in healing autoimmune disease is really removing the dysregulation of the immune system and re-regulating it, well, functional medicine is effective now that we know this research as of 2018 after the immune system is re-regulated. So maybe you're someone who has tried functional medicine and you say, you know, I already tried that, it didn't work for me, or you've heard of it uh, and, and we're a little skeptical. Well, I just want you to know it absolutely works, but it can only work after the immune system is re-regulated. So now I'm excited to share with you the most powerful way to re-regulate it instantly. So here it is, the breakthrough are mesenchymal stem cells. So a lot of people, when they hear stem cells, they instantly think of like embryonic stem cells uh, that were used in research a while back. These are actually legal to use in treatment, so they are not utilized in autoimmune treatment. But what stem cells are, are just cells that can differentiate into different types of tissues. So here we're talking about adult stem cells, and these can come from a variety of sources, uh, such as your own body or a donor, and there's even different kinds within your own body. So let's not really get into that right now. Uh, in fact, if you have questions later, I'm going to give you the opportunity to get all of your questions about that answered. But I want to show you the science on why mesenchymal stem cells are helping people with autoimmune disease re-regulate their immune system and repair the damage that has been done. So let's go back to this chart after looking at that amazing research and I'm going to show you exactly what it means on here so it's really easy to understand and it makes it simple. And remember, T effector cells, we're just going to simplify and say these are bad. T regulatory cells are good, TNFR1 is bad, and TNFR2 is good. So when the stem cells are applied, and by the way, we use an intravenous dose oftentimes, sometimes a couple other methods, but when these stem cells go inside the body, they have a tremendous impact, and this is exactly what they do to these types of cells in the immune system. So the stem cells are going to affect both T effector and T regulatory cells, as well as TNFR1 and TNFR2. And the effect that the stem cells have on the pro-inflammatory or the bad types of cells for people with autoimmune disease is they actually down-regulate them. This means they decrease the production of them, which decreases flare-ups and symptoms while at the same time they actually increase TNF's ability to adhere to TNFR2, which upregulates or increases the production of the T regulatory cells. And this is the most important point because this is what's going to increase healing and long-term health in your condition because it's going to actually re-regulate the immune system. 
So just to recap here, you can see the stem cells actually go inside the body and immediately, almost like a light switch being turned on and off, they turn off the bad pathways and they turn on the good pathways. So remember Zeta, how she felt results the next day? Well, this is why, is, is because it of course takes time to heal and I'm not saying that this is a quick fix. This is actually just the most powerful agent to immediately re-regulate the immune system which really is the most important step in healing autoimmune disease and is the most breakthrough, groundbreaking medical science that has ever been discovered for autoimmune disease. And just to emphasize this and make it very simple to understand, there's a sick fish and a healthy fish here. The sick fish is on the left. Actually, he's trying to get out of his conditions. The healthy fish is on the right. What's the difference? Would a doctor treat the fish or would they treat the water. I hope you probably said it there because they would treat the water because the water is the environment the fish is in. It's impossible to be healthy in a sick environment. Stem cells change your internal environment. And here is the real top three ways they change the internal environment. The first is they regenerate and repair damaged tissues and have powerful immunomodulatory effects, which means they balance the immune system and reverse the root cause of autoimmune disease, which is immune dysregulation. The next thing they do here is help your body promote the generation of the good cells, the T regulatory cells that are gonna decrease your inflammation so your body can heal and they repress the production of the bad cells or the T effector cells. So this is so important because it switches your immune system from attacking you to healing you. And the last thing they do and the reason people have almost immediate results after having these applied to their body is because they calm down an overactive immune system. Mesenchymal stem cells help secrete things like nitric oxide that actually help tone down the immune response and people notice immediate relief. So it is because of things like this uh, that people are having the results. And I just wanted to share one more testimonial here with you. Uh, this is a comment from a review that Erin posted on her Facebook. Uh, and she said, hey, look, I've had MS for 14 years. It's been getting worse, but just five days after the procedure, I feel the best I have in 14 years. So five days after the stem cell procedure, she feels the best she has in 14 years. So she's been taking medications the whole time. She's been trying other things. And within five days, she already feels better. So this shows you the power of stem cells. And our vision here at NSI is backed by those results that I just shared with you. And we have helped 20,000 people have successful comebacks to health because of the steps they've taken and because of the things we've given them to do. So if you are just absolutely sick and tired of dealing with your disease, managing it, and not really having effective outcomes, or you're just looking for something that works, I'm here to tell you and restore hope in you through the science and through educating you as we've done that there is hope. I mean, the truth about autoimmune disease has been discovered. It's not my opinion. It's absolutely true backed by science. So no one can argue with that. And we have personally seen the results and we believe that anyone who wants this healing can definitely have it. And I wanna leave you here with one last story and I'm gonna give you what I promised in the beginning here in a few more seconds, but this fish, I wanna tell you a super important story about him to help you understand um, what you're going through because I'm sure you're sitting there thinking, how haven't I heard of this before? Or if it really actually works like that, why hasn't anyone told me? Well, this is why, is because like I said before, Big Pharma does not want you to know this information because it actually works. And it's gonna prevent the need for a lot of their medications it's giving people their health back. So this fish, when he was young, he was told, hey, look around, you see this bull, this is all you have. This is your environment, there's nothing else out there. So this fish believed it. Uh, when he was about a year old though, this bird flew overhead and he said, hey there fish. He says, why are you in that little tiny bowl when there's this whole other world out there and all these other opportunities? And he said, well, this, uh, no, I don't know what you're talking about. This is the only thing there is and this is what I was told from birth. Well, the bird said, hey, all you have to do is jump out over the top and then I'm telling you there's a whole nother world out there. 
The fish said, no, it's not that easy. If that was the case, I would have already done it. And the bird said, trust me, take the leap of faith and try it. So the fish jumped out and he discovered there was this whole other world out there. So when you're sitting there, you know, thinking, nope, this is the only thing. If it actually worked, I would have done it by now. I'm telling you that is not the case. Do not be the fish that is just sitting inside the bowl when there's this whole other world of healing out there for you. So I'm gonna make this really easy for you. And just like in the beginning when I promised, I'm gonna offer you something at the end to see if this is appropriate for you. Uh, this is what I'm doing right now. So if this all makes sense to you, uh, and, and you or a loved one or someone you know is looking for a change in their life and really wants to regain their health and leave their disease in the past, we are extending the opportunity for you to find out if you're a good candidate to receive care at our clinic. And this is in the form of a complimentary, no cost consultation with one of our autoimmune care experts. So to get this, all you have to do is fill out the form on this page or give us a call at the number below. So also like us on Facebook, uh, subscribe to our YouTube because we are always putting out relevant current research on all sorts of conditions and just health facts overall that are backed by science. So if you feel this presentation was powerful, by all means, you have our permission to forward or share this with anyone that you could think it could be useful to as well. And, you know, sharing this type of information is what is going to change the health care system that we work in. So I really need your help in spreading the truth as well. So because true healing is now available, it does not make sense to go back to the old ways that just leave you sick and dependent on things that should really be in the past. So we have the tools that are backed by science. We have the results. And I really look forward to seeing if we can help you. So I just want to thank you for your time and attention. And remember, do not be the fish in the bowl.